While working on these quadcopter motor assemblies, I felt like my trusty 80 watt weller wasn't up to the task for the first time. These boards were made with thermal performance in mind. So some, especially the ground pins, can take huge amounts of heat away from the place where you need it. Of course you could try to compensate by increasing your soldering iron temperature, but then you'd risk overheating your semiconductors too. Better solutions are a high thermal capacity soldering tool, or a more powerful heater that can react quickly and replenish the heat after the ground plane has taken its share. So I was browsing through these sexy JBC stations the other day, drooling just a little bit. But jeez, those prices are real turnoffs. All the magic actually happens in the tips, which they call cartridges. Heater and thermocouple are built into those. So even the handle is just a comfortable socket, basically. Those two components are quite affordable, actually. Even with brawny 250 watts. I think I'll buy those and try to DIY the power supply station. The materials for which are already here, I'm sure about that. Wow, I didn't expect the JBC components that quickly. Whoops, that's something else entirely. Sorry, my fault. But here they are for real. T470 handle. Feels fantastic. And one of the C470 cartridges. Business end ready for action. Now for the command center. Theoretically, very easy. We've got a heater and a temperature sensor built into the cartridge. All we need to add is a sufficient power supply and a PID temperature controller that controls the power going into the tip in such a way that it heats up quickly but doesn't overshoot. In practice, there's a little difficulty built into JBC cartridges. A little difficulty for DIY endeavors at least. For everything else, it's a sophisticated solution with many advantages. Essentially, it is a heater and a thermocouple in series with a center tap. That way the heater current doesn't have to pass the thermocouple, as it does in certain Heiko tools, I think. And the thermocouple materials can be selected freely, instead of incorporating the heating wire. Only a few disadvantages for me to deal with. For example, we have to cut the power every time we want to take a measurement. The temperature reading would be influenced otherwise, because thermocouple and heater share a pin. Let's get started with a couple of tests. If possible, I'd like to use an integrated MAX31855 cold junction compensated thermocouple to digital converter. <laughs> it has everything built in and it delivers the temperature ready to use over the SPI bus. I'll hook it up between an Arduino and the soldering iron and I use my most trustworthy thermocouples as references. Good news first, I can power the heater and leave the thermocouple converter connected because it doesn't overload and it recovers instantly. <clears throat> instantly. There we go. On the other hand, the readings aren't equal and only proportional below 100 degrees C. So I think it's safe to say that the JBC thermocouple is not a type K and needs rescaling in software if we go along with this all-in-one chip solution. There's another problem. If I wanted a grounded tip, which I think I do, the thermocouple converter would report an error. I could try to set up a floating ground for the control circuitry to circumvent the problem, but I think I'll investigate the alternatives first. Apparently an off-the-shelf PID temperature controller could also handle it, but I couldn't live with the clicking relay and the missing power control. Oh, and the humongous overshoot. Doing it all discreetly feels a bit redundant because Sparky BG has already published an incredible project in the Dangerous Prototypes Forum. Please check it out, it leaves no wish unfulfilled. Except maybe in terms of complexity. It's a huge project, worth every second you put into it. But here's my minimalistic approach using a 24 volt DC power supply and a MOSFET high side switch. Works fine, but can never unleash the full 250 watts of power. I 
I had falsely assumed that the big cartridges would be content with 24 volts. But the heater resistance is actually 7.2 ohms, and to deliver our peak power through there, we need something above 40 volts. Well, I don't have a DC power supply with that voltage, at least not in a usable size. Nope. But I do have this hi-fi amplifier transformer. That looks like a perfect fit. And AC power control can be done very gracefully in an application like this. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get the basics sorted. First we need an instrumentation amplifier to measure the minuscule thermocouple voltage. I'll use an LTC2051, which can easily be configured as one. As a matter of fact, the typical application is an instrumentation amplifier with a gain of 101. Perfect, I'll copy that. It's a bit noisy and not particularly accurate, but it's plenty good for soldering temperature, which is usually chosen in 20 or even 50 degree C steps. The same applies to a temperature sensing Arduino. A simple thermistor based voltage divider is sufficient for cold junction compensation. Then we can connect the soldering iron to the instrumentation amplifier and the instrumentation amplifier to another microcontroller ADC. I thought about grounding the tip with a 1 mag resistor in case I ever touch a live conductor accidentally. But the internal resistances are much lower, so I think higher voltages would find a way through no matter what. The main power switch is a triac in this first attempt. Gets really warm though and should be replaced with something efficient ASAP. My first inclination was to do face cutting for proper AC power control. But I found multiple disadvantages, for example audible humming from those sharp corners. So for now I'm passing full waves only, which is elegant, simple and overall the right approach in my opinion. In those pauses I'm taking the temperature measurements. Yeah, you better shake off those drops, idiot. Perturbations. When I'm far below the target temperature, I want few measuring pauses so that I can reach the set point as quickly as possible. Thirty to three hundred and ten seconds. That's more like the performance I expected. Even a Tesla couldn't beat that. When I'm close to or at the set temperature, I can take measuring pauses all the time to avoid overshoot and to react quickly to sudden changes. Let's see how that looks in software. The millivolt variable is initialized to the current thermocouple voltage in millivolt taking into account the gain of the instrumentation amplifier. That voltage is multiplied by 43.5, which seems to be a good approximation to get an uncompensated thermocouple temperature reading, to which I add the ambient temperature to compensate it. I totally stole that number from Sparky BG. Anyway, that gives us a plausible temperature output on the serial port. To get the best performance I'm using a bit of low-level AVR timer magic. If I didn't have a zero crossing interrupt, I could just turn off the triac gate and wait for one main cycle before I take a measurement. The difference in performance wouldn't even be noticeable, I guess. But it's just neater this way, isn't it? And here's what I talked about earlier. The closer I get to the target temperature, the more often I take measurements. If a measurement is in order, I turn off the triac gate, wait for two more main cycles, to make sure everything is settled down and take the measurement as before. If we are missing heat, I'm turning on the triac, otherwise not. That's it, but it's probably a bit much to take in all at once, so I'll put a link to the final software in the description. It should have buttons and LCD support too. I could go on and on with this video about PCB design, 
about dropping phones in ferric chloride, and about mediocre etching results because of debilitating frustration. I would have loved to address GoPro Hero 4 retail packaging in particular. But the point of this video was how easily you can get superior JBC performance on a budget. I think I'll keep my superior JBC performance permanently, so I'll finish the project to the best of my abilities without having to reach around a camera all the time. If you're interested in the final result, you should consider subscribing, because it'll surely appear in my future videos. Thanks.